Good morning everyone, I'm Stefano Garzarella and I'm a software engineer at Red Hat and today we will talk about VSOC, a way to communicate between VM and the host with a very minimal configuration. So, uh, it's not working. <laughs> what happened? Okay, can I continue? Okay, this is the agenda of the talk. First of all, we will have an overview of VSOC and looking also at some use cases. Then we'll take uh, an, a look of uh, implementation details, uh, looking also at some uh, transports that implement the communication channel between host and guest. We will see some new features, such as multiple transport, local communication, and network namespace support. And finally, we'll take a look of tools and languages that support BSOC socket. During the presentation, we'll have some very short demos to understand better on how to use VSOC. VSOC is the acronym of VM socket. Uh, it, it allows to, you, to create a communication channel between guest and host using the standard POSIX socket API. And a peer, I mean a guest or a host, is addressed by a context identifier, CID. And we have well-defined CIDs, for example, CID Honey, used for listing on any CID. It's CID local, it is a new one, and it is used for local communication. And CID host, it is, its value is two, and it is very useful in the, in the guest to reach the host in any condition. Compared to a network card interface where we need to set up IP addresses for both host and guest, uh, with, with VSOC, the only thing to configure is the CID to assign to a VM, and this can be configured by the user or automatically by the management tool. Uh, anyway, in the guest, no configuration is needed, and the host can be always reached using the CID host. As we said, uh, an application can use socket API, such as bind, listen, send, receive, to create a communication channel between guest and host, and um, to use VSOC. The address family to use is AF VSOC, and uh, I don't, and, sorry, uh, the address family to use is AF VSOC, and uh, the, a pair of socket is addressed by a 32-bit context identifier, that identify the VMs or the host, and the 32-bit port to identify the service. So if you want to uh, adapt an existing TCP application to use uh, VSOC, the only thing to change is the peer addressing using the VSOC address family. Uh, stream socket are supported by every transport, and datagram instead is transport dependent. Uh, now we can talk about some use cases of VSOC. As we saw, network application can be easily adapted, but VSOC is very useful for guest agents or when the hypervisor wants to provide some services to the guest. Some real cases that use uh, VSOC are the QEMU guest agent or the Kata container agent. In this, uh, it is used to start a container in a VM and control them. Another example is the Android debug bridge. You can use VSOC when you have an, um, an Android device emulated in a VM and you want to use ADB without configure network cards or serial ports. Uh, going into the details, under the VSOC core that provides the socket interface to the user application, we have several transports implement, that implement the communication channel between guest and the host. These transports depend on the hypervisor and we can put them in two different groups. The first one is the guest to host transports. They run in the, in the guest and um, usually they are device driver. For now, currently we have Vert.io, VMCI, and Hyper-V transport. Another group is the host to guest transport. They run in the guest and, uh, sorry, they run in the host and usually they provide the device emulation to the guest. And for now we have vhost and VMCI transport. So in the QEMU KVM environment, we have Vert.io transport running in the guest and vhost transport running in the host. Both transports provide the interface to the socket layer through the VSO core, and they use the Vert.io queues to exchange packets. The vhost transport 
provides the internal Vertaio VSOC device emulation to the, to the guest that implements the Vertaio VSOC device driver, providing the vert queues to the host that use the IO event FD and IQFD to get and inject events to the guest. Let's try to start a VM using libvirt, QMU, and KVM and try to communicate using NCAT. It's a very simple demo. We can start our VM with vert install. We can create our VM with vert install and we can configure the amount of RAM, the number of CPU. But the important thing is the, this, com, this parameter to let's say, okay, attach a VSOC device and we are configuring the CID assigned to this VM. In this case, it's 33. Okay, vert install is, is using uh, libvirt to create a QM or KVM virtual machine and it will configure the parameters uh, the, that we specify, such as the amount of RAM, the number of virtual CPU, and uh, it will attach the device that we need, such as the um, block devices for our disk image and the VSOC device configuring the CID that we assign to this VM. Now just wait the boot. Okay, we can log in. Okay, this is the host to guest communication demo. So what we want to do now is to start NCAT in the host, listening on port 1234. We use uh, the verbose mode just to see the detail of the connection and we specify uh, dash dash VSOC to use the VSOC socket. This is a standard NCAT that now support VSOC. Okay. Now, what we can do in the guest is to try to connect to the host. So as, using NCAT as well, we need to specify the CID of the uh, remote peer. In this case, is the host, and we can use the well-defined CID2. So the guest can reach the host using the, the, the CID2 in any condition, and the port where NCAT is listening. Okay, you have the connection, so I am the guest. Now we can do the opposite, starting NCAT listening on port 1234 in the guest, and we can connect from the host. In this case, we need to use the CID that we assign to this VM, so 33, and the port where NCAT is listening. So, okay, we have, hey, I am the host. Yeah, we can switch to the slide. Now we can talk about new feature. The first one is multi-transport. Multi so before Linux 5.5, the VSO core was able to handle only one transport at runtime. So it means that in a nested VM environment, we couldn't load both host to guest and guest to host transports together. For this reason, we introduced this, uh, this feature. So starting from Linux 5.5, the VSO core is able to handle two types of transport loaded at runtime together. The host to guest transport to handle the host part in the communication, so in this case to communicate with L2, and the guest to host transport to handle the guest part in the communication. So in the Kuhamu KVM environment, the L1 guest will load both VertIO transport to communicate with L0 and VHost transport to communicate with L2. Another feature, recently added is the local communication. This can be very useful, for example, to testing and debugging application that use VSOC without running VMs. Think about CI, it cannot be simple, for example, to start a VM, or run and synchronize tests between host and guest. For this reason, we introduced the VSOC loopback. It will be available in uh, Linux 5.6, and it we, we also introduced a new CID, the CID local. Its value is one and can be used to do the local communication on the same host. Anyway, other CIDs can be used. For example, if we are inside a guest, we can use the CID that is assigned to this guest, or if we are on L0 host, we can use CID host to do the local communication because we are the lowest layer. We, we don't have any other VM on, uh, under us. Okay, let's take a look at local communication. Uh, what, as we previously done, we can start NCAT listening on port 1234. And this time, still in the host, we can try to connect with NCAT using the CID1. That means, okay, do local communication. And that's it. 
we are local. And restarting, sorry, restarting the, the, uh, the NCAT listening on port 1234, we can do the same thing also using the CAD2 because we are on the L0 host. Okay, this was very fast. So the, uh, another feature is the network namespace support. It is an experimental feature. Um, the current implementation does not support network namespace. This means that resources such as the CAD allocation are shared between them. I'm currently working on this. I sent some uh, patches upstream with a proof of concept. So the idea is um, that network namespace support can be useful in the host to partition VMs between different VM monitors or at final granularity. And these features allow us also to assign the same CID to VMs running in different network namespace or to uh, run application listening on the same port but in different network namespace. So for example, in this case, we have two network namespace plus the default one. So we are able to start three different VMs with the same CID and three different application listening on the same port. The network namespace support can be also useful in an asset VM environment. For example, to isolate host application and guest application listening on the same port with CAD Honey. So for example, in this case, we have two applications. Uh, one, it's the guest application that want to communicate with L0, and this one is a host application that want to communicate with L2. So, oh, sorry, creating the, um, and NetNS1, we are able to, so the application in the NetNS1 can communicate only with L2, and the application in the default network namespace can communicate only with L0. So in this way, they are isolated. Let's take a look on this experimental feature. So this is the network namespace demo. The first thing that we can do is to create a new network namespace. Now, we can start inside this network namespace and cut, listening on port 1234. And now, this guest, uh, we started this guest before the, the creation of NS1. So this is not running in the network NS1. It's running in the default network namespace. So if we, we try to connect to the, to the host, the connection is, is uh, refused. So what we can do now is to try to create a new VM inside NS1. So this time, we can use QEMU directly to create a new VM in the NS1. And the important thing is we want to attach a vhost vsoc device. And we are assigning the 33 CID. So it is the same CID. It's just an example to show you that with the network namespace support, we are able to have two VMs with the same CID because they are running in two different network namespace. Of course, I can assign a different one or using libvirt, we can live to libvirt to, to automatically choose a, a, an available one for us. So now the VM is booting, and uh, just to wait. Okay, we can log in. Now what we can do now is to do the same the same thing. So try to connect to the host using NCAT. And yeah, we have the connection. OK. And it works. We can turn off this VM. And now we can talk about uh, tools and languages that support VSOC. Most of them are merged, up, merged upstream. And these are the useful tools that introduced the VSOC support in the last few years. Uh, with these tools, we can dump traffic, statistics, we can test the host gas communication, we can access block devices using NBD over VSOC, or we can measure the performance with iperf, or, or we can do very cool things with socket, for example, to concatenate TCP IP socket with VSOC socket or to VSOC socket. For the developer's point of view, these are the languages that allow us to develop application using a VSOC socket. They mainly provide uh, the binding for the VSOC address family. And this is an example, very simple. Uh, we have two, two Python applications uh, that allow us to communicate between guest and host. We have, on the left, we have the client running in the guest that want to connect to the server running in the host. We can try them. 
So this is the Python example demo. So we can start Python in the guest, in the host and in the guest. Now we need to import the socket module. It is the only module needed. All the VSOC stuff are inside this module. At this point, we need to create our socket and we need to use the AF VSOC address family and we want a stream socket. We can do exactly the same thing also in the guest. And since we want the, the server in the host, we need to bind this socket to an address. And in this case, we are using CID Honey because we, we, we want to listen on any CID and port 1234. Now we can put the socket in listening mode and we can wait for a connection on the accept system call. At this point in the guest, we can connect to the host. So using the connect, we, we can use the VM add seed host, CID host, or, uh, the, or the two value, so it's the same, and the port 1234. Now we have the connection, so in the host we can wait for some bytes and we can send something from the guest with the send, okay? We receive the data, so we can print the remote CID, this 33, it was the CID that we assigned to this VM. The remote port, it is a random port assigned to the socket by the kernel, and the data received. So concluding, VSOC is very useful when we need a point-to-point -point connection between host and guest. Existing TCP IP application can be easily adapted, just changing the address family of the uh, just changing the address family of the socket, so just changing the, the peer addressing. And more and more tools and languages are supporting VSOC in the last years. And about new features, nested VHAMs will be supported in, li in Linux 5.5, loop back in Linux 5.6, and hopefully network name space will be available soon. Thanks. And question? Yep. No, uh, do you, sorry? Yeah, this was the other side. Yeah, VM address is host only if host to guest is loaded and guest to host is not loaded. Yeah, this is for local communication. Uh, ah, sorry, the, the, the question is, um, we, uh, I, I wrote in the slide that uh, the CID host is supported only if host to guest is loaded and guest to host is, guest to host is not loaded, but it's, um, it means you can use CID host to do local communication in this case. So only if you are on L0. So if you don't have any host under you, you can use the CID host for local communication. Yeah, it's, okay. it's, okay. Thank you. Yeah, sorry for that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, please. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, like so can you repeat? So, uh, Yeah, the question was, uh, can we map a VSOC socket on a Unix file, for, for example, Unix domain file? Yeah, yeah you, can, you, you need um, an, app, an user space application to do this. But for example, you, with SOCAT, you can do it. Uh -huh. so, so, like, for example, like, QV guest agent could possibly do that. And then just, it's a lot of work to get this upstream into like, every application. Right? So like, that could be a, a bridge. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you can create a bridge with socket and use the QEMA guest agent. Okay. And as far as the subcat VSOC, is the intent to upstream that or Yeah, send the patches to the maintainer is reviewing, but yeah, the idea is to have it upstream. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes if we have uh, network namespaces, we can't communicate between them using 
you, the, if I understood you, you mean uh, we can remove the network cards and use this? No, no, no. I, I mean, uh, if we have two network namespaces. Oh, okay. And we are trying to communicate between them through the not working right now. No. Okay, the question. Yeah, the question is: If you have two network namespaces, can you can we communicate between network namespaces using VSOC? Yeah, for example, if we have a container, can yeah. we connect from the container to the host using VSOC? So we just need some device like to be prepared. So for now, it, uh, there is no network namespace support, so you can do it. But if we enable the network namespace, for now we are not allowing to communicate between two different network namespace. So maybe it can be a feature that we can add to, to do it, or you can use other uh, way like Unix domain socket or standard socket. And you have the, the two hosts connected, for example, with a TCP or? No, for now you are not able. You need to use a user space application to do this kind of bridge. And SOCAT was one of the, this kind of application that you can connect to different kind of socket, like one TCP socket and VSOC. Yeah, it's, it's simp something you're saying. You need an user space application to do the bridge. Mm -hmm. Is there some limitation in the amount of uh, guests that can be connected to an application uh, in the host to the same socket? Like, for example, the case would be that you would be streaming events happening on the host to the guests. And, uh, What kind of limitation do you mean? I don't know, like maybe only two thousand guests can be connected. Or oh no, and there are no limitation. The CAD are thirty-two bit CAD, so you can start whatever how many uh, guests do you want. Depends on, of course, memory of your machine and so. Okay, we are run out of time. Thank you very much.